In this video, I will show you everything you need to know about the Canvas Editor in Leonardo AI. In order to get started, we need to come here and click on Canvas Editor, or come back all the way down here and click on Canvas Editor. And now we are in the Canvas Editor. This box right here is where we will make our edits. Anything that is outside the box can't be downloaded. Now down here, we have the option to select the dimensions of the box. I will select 1024 by 768. Now I want to show you all the tools Canva Editor has. But in order to do that, we need an image. So we will simply come right here where it says Upload Image, and we have three options. We can upload from our computer, we can use one of our previous generations, or we can use an image from the community. For this example, I will choose Community. And this opens the community feed with all the latest generations. So I will scroll down until I find an image I like. Look at this one. I will simply click on it. And now, as you can see, it is imported into our canvas. But we can't look at the full image because we are very zoomed in. In order to fix that, you come up here where we have the minus button, which is the unzoom, and the plus button, which is the zoom and click on the minus until we can literally see the full picture. Now we need to fit the picture inside the box so we can edit it. To do that, we will come to the left, click on the Select option, and then we can click on the image and make it smaller until it fits inside the box. I will also change the image dimensions to 640 by 8112 to fit the shape of the image better. Alright, now that the image is inside the box, we can zoom back in and maybe increase it a little bit more till it reaches the top of the box. Now let me show you how you can edit the image using AI. Let's say for this example we want to create a dam inside the river. We first have to come right here and click on Draw Mask. What this does is allow us to highlight the areas we want the AI to make changes. So we will come right here and highlight the area we want the dam to be created. Now we come down here to the prompt bar and type the change we want in the selected area. So I will type Create a Dam and click on Generate. Boom. Now we have three generations from which we can choose from. The first, the second, and the third one. The third one is exactly what I asked for, so I will click on Accept. And boom. Now this image has a dam and all that just by using a single prompt. The next tool we can use is the Erase tool. Let's say I want to erase a specific part of the image. I simply come right under the draw and click on Erase. This gives me a brush where I can erase everything that I paint over. Also up here I can increase or decrease the size of the brush, and I can also select what elements can be erased. I can choose only images, sketches, masks, or leave it on all. Now let's say for example I want to erase these trees. The only thing I have to do is to start painting over them until I erase them completely. But now there is empty space in the image which I want to fill in. Let's say I want to fill this area with some flowers. I will simply go to the prompt bar and type flowers on the ground and click on Generate. I will again get three options, and here as you can see we got the flowers we asked for, so I will click on Accept. Now under the Erase option is the Sketch option, which, in order to have better results, you need to change the Canva mode, which I will show you in a bit. You also can add text to your image. You simply click on Text. This opens all these options on top of your screen where you can select the font you want, and to the right, you can change the size of the letters by sliding this bar, and to the left, you can choose the color you want your text to be. After you are done with the options, you simply go wherever you want to insert the text, and left-click. I will type flowers, for example. Now, if you don't like something you did, you can go down here and click on Undo, which will revoke your last move. You also can clear your canvas by clicking on Clear Canvas History, and you can download your work by clicking on the download arrow. Now let's take a look at the options you have on the right. Up here you can see the Leonardo AI model you are using. As you can see, there are many models to choose from, and each one specializes for a specific type of generation. You just need to find the right one for the generation you want to do. For the time being, I will leave it at the DreamSharper version 7. Then we have the different Canva modes, which each one specializes in a certain type of edits. First, we have text to image in which you create an image from scratch by using text. Then we have the in paint out paint, which we are on right now, which is for editing specific parts of the image. Then we have the image to image where the AI takes into account another image in order to make similar changes in our own image. 
At last we have sketch to image where you make a sketch of what you want to create and the AI creates the image based on your sketch. I will show you these modes in a bit. Let's take a look at all the settings first. The outpaint option is for when there is empty space in the box where your image is inside. The AI fills in the space with relevant images just like it did with this image. If you remember the image was like this and after our first generation it was like this. Then we have the inpaint strength, which determines how much the AI takes into account your current image and fills it with relevant content. The higher you have this, the more relevant. The lower, the more creativity you give the AI. Then we can select the number of images that we get with each generation. Then the image dimensions. And in the advanced setting, we have the option to change the aspect ratio. Then we have render density, which is for pixel density. And then we have the guide scale, which determines how strongly our prompt will be weighed. All right, now I will show you how to use the other modes of the canvas editor. First, we have to come up here and click on canvas mode. First, I will show you the sketch two image. So now that we selected the mode, the AI is better acquitted to follow the sketches we are going to draw. Let's say, for example, I want the AI to create a rock right here on top of the grass. I will simply come right here and click on sketch. Now I will adjust the size of my brush and pick the color I want from the color palette. I even can click on this pen and then click on a color inside the picture, and it will automatically import that color into my brush. Now I will draw a rock. I know I am not the best artist, but bear with me. And now I will simply come to the prompt bar and type Big Rock and click on Generate. And boom. As you can see, the AI took reference to what I drew and made a rock very similar to what I designed. I personally like the second one more, so I will accept it. And just like that, the rock that I horribly drew is inserted beautifully inside the image using the sketch to image mode. Now let me show you the image to image mode. First we need to clear our canvas history. Alright, now it's time to show you how to use the image to image mode. First, we will come right here and click on Canvas Mode, and now we will select Image to Image. Now we need to scroll all the way down and find Control Net. Then we need to turn it on. From here, we get the four options. We can choose Pose to Image, Edge to Image, Depth to Image, and Pattern to Image. Then we have the Control Net Weight, which determines how much Control Net will influence our generation. Generally, if you want the end result exactly the same, you should leave it at 1. Let's first start by choosing Pose to Image, which means that the AI will detect the pose in the image we upload and will keep the same pose in any new image we want to make. We also make sure the weight is on, 1. Now we need to upload an image, so I click on Upload, and for this example, I will pick from the community. Now we scroll down until we find an image that we like. I will pick this one. And now I will resize it to fit inside the box. As you can see, the girl in the picture has a very distinct pose. She is turned to the right, which the AI will recognize and keep in our new generation. Now we simply need to prompt the AI to create a new image. So I will come down here to prompt and type, create a farmer girl, and click on generate. And you can see these are the results. I like the first one better, so I will choose it. And if I put the images next to each other, you can clearly see that the AI kept exactly the same pose of the first image in its new generation. All right, now I will delete both of the images. And now we will go again to Control Net, and this time choose Edge to Image, which detects the edges of the image and keeps them intact in the new generation. We again check if we have the weight at one, and we go to Upload, then Community. And scroll down until we find a picture we like. This one is perfect, so I will choose this one. And size it down to where it fits inside the box. All right. Now let's say that I want to create a queen that has the same body size and face as this girl. I will simply come to the prompt bar and type, create a female queen with a crown in her head, and click on generate. These are the results. All of them look great, but I like the first one more, so I will choose it and click on accept. And if we put the images side by side, we can see that the AI recognized perfectly the edges of the image, and created the new image with exactly the same edges. I will put both images to the side, and I will go again to Control Net, and this time, choose the depth to image. What this does is recognize the different depths that an image has and keeps them in the new generation. Let me show you an example. 
we leave the weight at 1. Then we go to upload. This time I will upload from a computer and choose the image I want. Now I will resize it to fit inside the box. See how in this picture there are two different depths. The people in the front with their faces fully visible and the people in the back with their faces kind of blurry. That is what the AI recognizes and keeps in the generation. Let's say that I want to make a similar image just with a crowd of robots. I will simply come to the prompt bar and type a crowd of robots and click on generate. And as you can see, we have three images of crowds of robots. I like the first one more, so I will click on accept. And if we put the images side by side, you can clearly see that they both have two different depths, exactly as we wanted. One in the front, where the faces are clearly visible, and on the back, where the faces are blurry. Don't forget to like and comment. And if you want to learn how to use image-to-image -image on Leonardo AI, click on this video right here.